Hello and welcome to this Filbert Flies review of Jabieski Design's Krakow Scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This scenery package includes two airports, EPKK, which is the main Krakow airport, and EPKC, a rarely used airport closer to the city centre, as well as some hand-modelled city landmarks. We're going to take a look at all of it over the course of this review. For now though, I'm starting with an approach to EPKK to give you a look at the surrounding area and the chance to gauge the performance of this scenery on my system. You can find my system specs and graphics settings in the description down below. I have experienced one or two stutters while looking around the airport, but these haven't been too frequent or too bad. I'll let you watch the landing in peace and then I'll show you the scenery and give you my thoughts on it. Speak to you shortly. Welcome to Krakow, we're parked up here on stand 2 right and there are a lot of features at this airport that we've never seen before and you're going to see the first of these right now when I call the jetway. You will notice that the shutter at the end opens and a man appears to operate it, which is rather nice. Anyway, as the jetway connects we'll see how good a job it does and how good this man is at driving it. Not too bad, not too bad. He could have driven it a little further forward. There is a little bit of a gap on the floor there uh, between the jetway and the aircraft. The hood looks good though once it's attached. Certainly nothing I would find fault with. Now you'll notice that the jetway itself is custom modelled and we have tinted glass which looks really very nice. Uh, and as we go inside, unfortunately the tint disappears but you know, no great shakes I wouldn't have said. Let's move on to having a look at the terminal. Now once again this is one of Jivieski Design's fantastic glass terminals and you'll notice that the glass isn't entirely flat and the way it reflects is rather interesting and pretty realistic. Uh, so we've got this sort of pattern I suppose you'd call it uh, in the glass which is just down to the shape of those panels and as we move up and down you can see that the reflections change and that's really very impressive. We will pop inside shortly but before we do let's have a look at some of the exterior texturing. So these gate buildings, if that is indeed what they're called, I still don't know what you call these bits, gate towers, something like that. I'm just going to keep guessing until someone tells me in the comments, <laughs> are not bad. Uh, they're a little bit blurry when you get up close, uh, not the best texture work we've ever seen anywhere, including in uh, Javieski Design's own sceneries. But certainly as you pull up in an aircraft, you're not going to notice anything wrong with them. And I'm quite impressed with the details around the ground, the litter bins and these barriers, for example. The terminal itself on the ground uh, has reflective glass as we saw earlier. The ground level isn't transparent so that's just a flat texture but again it does look very very nice. The roof of the terminal building looks pretty nice, the modelling is quite detailed and the textures don't look bad at all. Not super sharp but plenty sharp enough for a roof. Let's move inside and have a look at some of the interior details now, starting with this control tower on top of the terminal building. Now I imagine this is where the ground controllers sit, I'm not absolutely sure but that would make sense unless they have a separate ramp control here 
I don't know. But anyway, it looks very, very nice. We've got a good amount of detail in here. Lit up computer screens with uh, convincing looking things on them. Uh, furniture, people, and we've got tinted windows, as in they retain their tint from the inside. And you'll notice this as we move back outside, everything gets brighter. So that's really very impressive. Coming down to the terminal, we will go through the uh, transparent window and have a look at what's inside here. So once again, absolutely bustling with life, loads of passengers standing around looking outside the windows, and the detail in the terminal is fantastic. Seating, signage, we've even got a bookshop here which has actual model shelves and uh, not quite model books but uh, very very realistic looking textures. Pretty convincing flat texture on the outside of this cafe here, and we can move all the way through the terminal including to the bits which don't have transparent glass looking out onto the apron. So perhaps not quite as stunning as Javieski Design's uh, Washington National, which is probably the best interior modelling I've ever seen, but still absolutely fantastic. I don't think you'll come to this airport and uh, wish there was more detail in here, put it that way. It's really, really lovely. Let's have a look at some of the peripheral buildings now and these are really nicely detailed as well. Again the texture work is not the sharpest but from afar it looks absolutely fantastic and that's the important thing. You're not going to be a taxiing an aircraft right up to this entranceway or at least I hope you're not. We've got a lot of ground clutter around and about the place, some pretty convincing models of uh, these little tractor units and uh, baggage belts etc. The main control tower looks incredibly good from the outside with really nice crisp texture work and a lot of detail on the modelling. And once again we have a modelled operating floor with tinted glass and just as much detail as we saw in the ground control tower earlier on. We have some hangers over here and once again they look absolutely incredible. I really like this uh, green discoloration on the side here. And you'll notice as we go inside that there is some interior modelling as well, or at least the walls are modelled. And we have these very convincing glass panels. The military apron has been very nicely reproduced and as you can see we have these uh, static aircraft parked on the ramp. I'm ashamed to say I don't actually know what these are, uh, but I do know that the models are pretty good. And the buildings along here look very nice from the taxiways and they look pretty nice even as you get close but you will notice that the textures aren't the highest resolution once again. Another control tower here, presumably a military control tower and another beautifully modelled interior. And just next door to the military tower we have the fire station complete with a fire engine parked out the front and this firefighter mannequin. I say mannequin because he's got a slightly scary face so I don't think he's an actual person. I think he's sort of like a scarecrow of some sort, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, as you're taxiing along you're going to enjoy seeing someone there. Just to the east of Terminal 1 we have Terminal 2 which once again has been very nicely modelled indeed and the texture work is first class over here as well. Some really nice attention to detail in the form of the signage and these little barriers outside the shutters here. Really really nice. Unfortunately we don't have a modelled interior here. As we move inside you will notice that this is in fact parallax effect but it's very nicely done parallax it must be said.
No transparent glass over here either, but some pretty convincing opaque window textures in use. You may well have noticed by now that there are a number of static airliners parked across the apron, but not all of them are static. I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but this locked Boeing 737 actually gets pushed back and towed forward by this tug. Now I haven't seen anything like this before, and I really like it. Obviously going around the airport reviewing it and seeing it going back and forth is a little bit odd, but arriving or departing from here and seeing a little bit of life on the apron, I think is a really nice touch. I'm also really impressed not only by the quality of the static airliner models, which are super crisp and beautifully textured, um, but I'm also impressed by the little scenes that have been created around them. So this Ryanair plane, for example, has a busload of passengers just boarding. And it's really lifelike, and it certainly brings a level of immersion that just having planes plonked about the place doesn't quite manage. The amount and quality of ground clutter is really impressive as well. High quality models, very nicely textured of air stairs, buses, catering vehicles, fuel tankers, and uh, a few buses moving around here and there as well. Very, very good indeed. The ground textures across the airport are very nicely done indeed. You will notice a little bit of blurriness here and there, for example, in the gaps between these paving slabs. But the texture work is fantastic and the weathering is first class as well. These little patches of dirt look very, very lifelike. The ground markings are pretty good as well, although they are in some places blurrier than what I would like. So it's a mixed bag. I'm really impressed by how faded they are. They look very realistic, not too cartoony. Uh, but we do have some blurriness and a few jagged edges. The jagged edges are particularly apparent on the yellow taxiway center lines, and you see them pretty much everywhere you go around the airport. These aircraft stop point markings also suffer from being slightly low resolution. They're not very easy to read at all, particularly, it must be said, on the stand we parked on. So in summary, very nice ground markings in terms of their colour and their fadedness, but they do all suffer a little bit from low resolution issues. The grassy areas look very nice and are complemented by this beautifully modelled Krakow VOR here. However, there are some areas where the developers had to use custom grass, which never looks quite as realistic. So there is a little bit of a clash between the two types of grass on either side of this taxiway. The runway looks absolutely fantastic. The materials used don't quite match the real runway, but they're pretty close and the colour matching is spot on. The markings are accurate and the texture work is really very good indeed. I'm particularly impressed by how well the rubber marking around the touchdown zone blends in with the texture underneath it. Looks very, very good indeed. The developer has included a good amount of detail in the landside areas. This multi-storey car park is particularly impressive, very nicely modelled, very nicely textured, including these advertising hoardings, which are pretty crisp. However, the ground textures are not so good. We've got default satellite imagery here out the front of the terminal, uh, which does spoil the immersion a little bit thanks to its low resolution. And the 3D cars don't do much to make up for this. But let's not forget, we have transparent glass all the way along and a fully modeled interior. So it swings and roundabouts and I can probably forgive a blurry roadway. The other side of the multi-storey car park we have the railway and the railway station and the amount of detail here is just incredible. Even the overhead line equipment looks just right and the tracks have 3D rails, which is amazing. You'll see a train in the station here and that is an animated train which goes backwards and forwards and once again it's been very, very nicely modelled. Just look at the detail on this platform. You wouldn't believe this was a flight simulator, would you? <laughs> Here's Krakow Airport by night, and honestly, I cannot find fault with it at all. The apron lighting is fantastic. It looks very, very realistic. The glow coming from inside the terminal looks just right. 
and even the animated buses which drive back and forth along this road are well lit. It's very impressive and very immersive. As we move inside, you'll notice that the interior lighting's pretty good as well. Absolutely believable that this is what the interior of the airport looks like by night. The remote stands are very nicely lit as well, and even the static airliner models have realistic lighting. Unsurprisingly, the taxiway and runway lighting looks very good as well. Here's crack out in the rain. As you can see, the ground textures look very good when they are wet, reflecting the aircraft and everything else around the airport very nicely indeed. We do have a little bit of popping of the transparent glass, as is often the case, uh, and again, as I always say, this is something that a Sobo needs to correct, as opposed to something that developers have much control over. And here's Krakow Airport in the snow. Now, the implementation of snow here isn't bad, uh, but it's not amazing. You'll notice that the red markings pop out uh, quite unnaturally. We've got some fairly sharp transitions between the areas that are covered with snow and the areas that aren't, uh, as you can see along this roadway here. Uh, we have a few patches across the airport which look like they should have snow on them, but don't for no apparent reason. And unfortunately, the runway is covered with snow. Uh, it hasn't been cleared at all. Now, snow is difficult to work with in MSFS, as we know. I've seen plenty worse in implementations than this, but I've also seen better, so I'd say average. This is the other airport included in the scenery. Uh, it's known as Krakow Rakowice Czerzyny Airport, EPKC, and it's right in the centre of Krakow. It's not particularly used these days, as I understand it, uh, but it is home to the Krakow Aviation Museum, uh, which we'll go and have a little look at now. And here it is. There really is a huge amount to see here, and I'm not going to go over it all, or you'll get very, very bored. But we have some beautifully modelled hangars, some really interesting old aircraft parked on the grass outside, and you could really spend half a day here, I'd say, going and admiring all the exhibits. So this is a really nice feature to have. But now we're going to take to the skies in the helicopter, and I'm going to show you some of the city centre landmarks. So the entirety of Krakow Old Town has been modelled. There are other landmarks scattered across the city, but this is probably the most impressive part of the scenery. So we're just going to have a look at a few of the landmarks around here. And because I can't fly and look in the right direction and talk at the same time, I'm going to periodically uh, press the pause key and uh, pop outside in the drone camera to give you a close-up look. Noisy old thing, this helicopter, isn't it? Anyway, here we are. Here is the old town. And uh, the quality of the modelling out here is outstanding, it must be said. This, I believe, is the Vavil Cathedral and the uh, Royal Palace Complex. Really intricate modelling, particularly on this tower. And some pretty crisp texturing as well, it must be said. And down here we have St Mary's Basilica, also very impressive. And all of the buildings surrounding it, as you can see, are custom modelled. Not perhaps to quite the same high standard as the main landmarks, but it's certainly a very nice representation of Krakow and certainly somewhere that you'll get a lot of pleasure out of exploring, I think. And just the other side of the river, we have the ICE Krakow Congress Centre, which is just here. Uh, and that's also been very nicely modelled. So just to prove that there are some buildings modelled away from the old town itself. And with that, I think we will head back to the airport for the conclusion before you lose interest. But uh, certainly a city that's worth exploring once you have this scenery installed. So here we are back where it all began at EPKK to sum things up. What do I think of this scenery package? Well, I think it is absolutely fantastic. 
There are one or two minor niggles, nothing to worry about in my opinion. Uh, basically, these are in the form of slightly low resolution textures in places. So we have the jagged ground markings and some of the peripheral buildings don't look at quite as crisp as I would like them to. However, the positives outweigh these negatives massively. Uh, we have a fantastically modeled terminal both inside and out. I was particularly impressed by the less than perfect windows, which give that sort of wavy reflection, which is very realistic. We've got beautiful night lighting and an incredibly immersive airport environment thanks to the animated lot plane, the very high quality static aircraft models, the ground clutter and the people who are boarding the static aircraft as well. That really does make a big difference. We've also got animated trains and a lot of detail in the landside areas. And of course, all of this is before we get on to the fact that there is a second airport included, which I won't try to pronounce for a second time because I think I've pushed my luck enough. <laughs> but that's really nice, as is the fact that we have buildings modeled in the city center. It's very rare that you get a scenery package that allows you to fly between two airports and also explore a city like Krakow. Uh, so it's a great value scenery package. And on the subject of great value, at the time of publishing, the uh, scenery is currently on sale in the flightsim.com store. You'll find a link down below, and it's quite a lot cheaper there than on Orbex. So do have a quick look there before you uh, choose where to buy it from. That's it. I hope you found this review useful. Uh, if you have, do please give the video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon here on Philbert Flies. Bye-bye.